in the next step in post-processing, we will get answers to calculate the force in each trust member as well as the, the stress. Um, and to see how ANSYS calculates these from the pin displacements, let me go back to an early slide from pre-analysis. And there I discussed how from the pin displacements by taking you know, components, one can figure out what is the axial extension or um, contraction of each bar, which I call D. And then from that, the strain, the stress in the bar, which is uniform, and then the force. Um, so let's get answers to do that. I'll go back to my answers model, highlight solution in the tree, and select beam results, axial force. And then uh, I will, and here, you need to make sure the display option is unaveraged um, and evaluate results. Now, if your display option is unaveraged, then it will show you a constant force over each bar, which is what we expect uh, according to our mathematical model. Um, if I instead have the average selected, which you know, I actually threw me off at first why the results look so weird. You can see that um, the, you know, the axial force varies from um, some value to, it, it basically is varying along the, the bar, which is not right. That's because, you know, it's taking the value at this node as an average between this value and, and the value for this bar, and similarly over here, and then it's, it's assuming a gradual um, change from this value to that value or linear change, but that's not right. So we want the unaveraged option, okay? And th this value is 1696.5. Um, so this is, in, this is intention. Let's first uh, m make sure that, you know, the bars being intentional compression makes sense. Um, so let me exact, go back to auto scale here. So it looks like this this pin has moved down a bit, and so this is in compression, and that's why it's negative. Um, whereas this bar is being, you know, it's mostly being extended um, because it moves, you know, this pin moves a lot more to the right than it moves down. Um, so we expect it to be in tension, which is the case. And similarly, you can reason for, for this bar. Let me turn off the undeformed. And then as we saw, if I turn on thick shells and beams, I can probe the value. Okay. So that's, that's a value there. And does that value make sense? Um, for that, I can, you know, I can look at equilibrium. So I have a force of 1200 newtons here. And since this is, uh, this bar is in tension, it's pulling on the pin and we need the component in, in this direction, which is, uh, the, so that angle is 45 degrees. So essentially then, one six nine six point five times cosine forty five degrees, and that comes out to be very close to twelve hundred. Okay, and it might not be exactly twelve hundred because ANSYS the ANSYS model uh, involves shear deformation, uh, but it's comforting that it, it's very close. And similarly, you can, you know, make sure that the other values also make sense uh, from an equilibrium perspective. Um, and then to to get the stress, um, because the, the force actually calculated from the stress, so let's get the stress rather than the force. Um, so I'll highlight solution in the tree. Uh, and I can't do it over here um, because this is for, uh, you know, if you had like a volume, you could do the stress over there. Line bodies behave differently um, because a mathematical model is different. So what I have to do is I'll say tool, beam tool, and what we need is the direct stress. So the direct stress is the stress due to um, 
extension or contraction in a, as opposed to the bending stress okay I have I can also look at maximum or minimum bending stress now the direct stress is constant across the cross section the bending stress is not which is why you have a maximum or a minimum we're not in, really interested in that um, so let me just evaluate all results and just look at the value that's constant over the cross section that's due to the extension or contraction and again I have to make sure I get the unaveraged option okay so if I divide if I multiply this by so this is the value in in this bar so if I take that value and I multiply it by the cross-sectional area I should get the axial force in this bar and similarly for this bar and this bar and I did check that and and indeed that is the case so can save the project um, and you can also save it in a WBPZ format so I can say file um, archive and go to my my working folder and save it as WBPZ and I want I don't have any imported files but I want my results that is the displacements at the nodes and and so on the only reason you'd uncheck that is if you had a big model and you wanted to get a, a small file um, and I'll say archive and now if you go to your um, that working folder you should see this trust.wbpz and the advantage of this way of saving is that you just need that okay otherwise this one you need this and also the associated folder um, so at the end I usually save it in WBPZ format uh, because that's easy to share so uh, we've done quite a bit of post-processing and a big takeaway from that is that one has to you know constantly keep asking do you know does this make sense do, does the uh, the positive or the negative nature of the values make sense do the order of magnitudes make sense and so on and that you get by by practicing uh, to think in that way and that leads to good engineering judgment